right, our last speaker uh, this morning before we have a coffee break is Patty Woodfinkel um, from the Earth and Mineral, what? Okay. Uh, Earth and Mineral Sciences Museum Art Gallery of Penn State University, uh, maximizing student engagement through non-major interns. Hello. Um, so I've got five minutes to talk about non-major interns and utilizing them in your collections. Most of us are science collections. Many of us have access to university students and can use them as interns. We have some fantastic students here as well. Um, but a lot of times we focus on our majors. So for example, Earth and Mineral Sciences Museum, we've got rocks, fossils, minerals. We do a lot with the geoscience students um, and a lot with the Earth and Mineral Science students. Who we don't reach out to are the art history students, the um, liberal arts students, the students in other departments like entomology. So that's kind of what I am going to talk about a little bit today. Um, the EMS Museum, like I said, we have rocks, fossils, minerals, but we also have a fantastic um, industrial art collection. So it's American industrial art, um, mostly paintings, lots of water watercolors and oil paintings. And so we have started reaching out to other departments to get interns to come to us and do their internship projects. Um, two of these students are art history students and um, are working on a museum certificate at the same time that they work on their degree. Uh, first student in the blue is Morgan. She is working on uh, mining lamps and looking at the history of mining lamps from, she's doing the research on the history of the mining lamps who made them patents, all of that information. But then she's also looking at the human story behind the people that use the mining lamps. Uh, mining in Pennsylvania was a huge industry. It still is, but this is working with the historic collection. We have John in the middle, who is actually recently accepted to a master's program in archives. And um, so the museum program had never thought to send an archive student to us for an internship program. He is scanning all of our historic photos, and um, as he learns more about the photos, he's correlating and identifying a lot of our unidentified photos, particularly from the 60s, when they just had numbers on them, and it would say, like, PSU for Penn State University number, and then those records are gone because they were held in a different office. They weren't held by the museum at the time. Um, the student on the end is Kelly. Kelly is my favorite intern. She's an entomology student. So she came in and helped us um, work on our IPM. So we had a general museum IPM, but it wasn't specific to our site and it didn't look at all of the ways in which insects and pests can come into our building. So she focused specifically on um, insect and pests that could come in from the outside portion of the IPM and really helped us hone in and identify those places that we were really having issues um, and do the research. And in doing that, we were able to put her in contact with a professional entomologist um, who was outside of her department. So she got to make a professional connection outside of her department at the same time. So it was really beneficial to both the museum and for um, Kelly. I'm working with a student right now to set up a new internship over the summer, and she wants to research um, a company called MSA. It's uh, Mining Safety Appliances. It was started in the 1920s by a man named George Dyke, um, and it ended up that George Dyke had a building at Penn State campus named after him. Um, so there's a lot of connections there that aren't necessarily something that my geology students really want to research or learn more about, but these history students are really eager to do this kind of research. So, um, just looking outside of your department and outside of your college can bring a lot of benefits both to you and to the students. Um, so that's all. Thank you.